Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to Groves Academy. Minnesota's only school for students with learning disabilities and attention deficits. My name is Ellen Engstrom, and I'm the Director of Teacher Training here as part of our outreach program. Um, I uh, will be introducing Ray Boyd, our psychologist, in just a minute or so, who will be talking to you about working memory and processing speed strategies for home and school. I just wanted to mention to you some of the opportunities and uh, resources we have here at Groves. Um, Ray is a uh, part of our diagnostics department, and we, which we've had for many, many decades, really. And that uh, in the diagnostics department, it's possible to have children and adolescents assessed for reading disorders, math difficulties, uh, attention deficit disorder, various executive function difficulties that result in poor organization and uh, uh, scattered thinking and so on, as well as mood challenges like depression and anxiety and so on. So, uh, if you are interested in this, I recommend you pick up a brochure on the Diagnostics Department, which is outside. I also want to draw your attention to um, a literacy event that we will be, uh, that we will be holding here at Groves. Um, this is our, on February 17th. We have a day-long conference on learning to read, bringing research to the classroom. Again, another uh, another piece of information about that. That event will be featuring Marianne Wolf, who is a researcher and neuroscientist from Tufts University, and she has done a wonderful job of explaining the reading brain to those of us who are not neuroscientists. And I um, strongly advise you to come, recommend that you come and enjoy that. The, uh, pro the uh, presentations that we offer as part of our outreach speaker series are now posted on YouTube. They are, so you can see a rebroadcast of some of these presentations if you were not able to attend them yourself. You can go, if you go to YouTube and search uh, Groves Academy, then you'll see there's a number of, uh, of YouTube presentations that have been videotaped that will appear there. We have numerous events here all through the year. Again, I recommend that you pick up our outreach calendar, which includes workshops and teacher training, as well as other events. We have probably a couple of events virtually every week here throughout the year, and uh, many of these are free to the community, um, by, uh, presented by our staff or some of our partners, such as the Upper Midwest Branch of the International Dyslexia Association or Learning Disabilities of Minnesota. And so we ask for your support to help us continue to provide this service to the community uh, and to help the outreach, support the outreach division in our attempts to present wide programming. So if we would appreciate any amount that you might be willing to donate to Groves, there is a Gibbs Gro Give Groves uh, box out, outside. If you feel so inclined, we would appreciate any, any amount of donation that you might be willing to give. Uh, we really appreciate that. Now, I would like very much to introduce Ray Boyd, a uh, psychologist here at Groves Academy and he will give you his presentation on working memory and processing speed strategies to use at home and at school. Ray?
Hey, well, first of all, I, I obviously you've all heard about working memory and processing speed somewhere along the line, or you wouldn't have shown up tonight. But I have to say that working memory and processing speed are those are two of those areas that are often that are often evaluated on IQ tests. In fact, the most frequently given IQ tests have sections that are called working memory and processing speed. And over the years, I've tested numerous kids and. I just found that these areas of cognitive functioning can really have an impact, even though when you think about how they're measured and what they mean, they don't seem like, sometimes it just doesn't seem like they should even be on IQ tests. And on some IQ tests they aren't, on some ability measures, they don't have these areas evaluated. But obviously, you know, it's something that's considered a sign of intelligence to be able to hold information in mind while you're doing something and also to be able to think quickly. And because if you're able to do those things, then you're able to be efficient and to move on to higher level thinking and to reason and comprehend language and solve nonverbal abstract problems rather than getting bogged down because you have poor working memory or processing speed. Because these things, t when you have weaknesses in these areas, it tends to slow you down and it tends to interfere with your thinking and your problem solving and just being able to get things done. And some of you may have, some of you may have kids where homework takes the entire evening. Does anybody have kids where that is? <laughs> I thought so. So often it's because, now of course you can have attention deficit and that interferes, but often people who have attention deficit disorders have working memory and processing speed weaknesses as well, or they're secondary to the ADHD. But when you have working memory and processing speed weaknesses, it just interferes with efficiency, being able to initiate, stick with something, problem solve efficiently, get things done and move on. So it's all about efficiency, I think. Uh, so it's, in this society, getting things done quickly and thinking quickly and getting jobs done, that's highly valued. So if you have working memory and processing speed weaknesses, that could be that could be a problem. You can still, however, be highly intelligent and you can be brilliant without having uh, strong abilities in these areas. But if you have weaknesses in these areas, then you do need often need to you, you either have accommodations or to develop strategies in order to get around those weaknesses. Otherwise, it's going it's to be a, a tough road. So I think I'll start by just talking about um, working, uh, working memory. And I would also like to say that uh, working memory and processing speed as part of an IQ test, if someone has extreme weaknesses in these areas, often an IQ, an alternative IQ can be determined from the other parts of the test, just by kicking those scores out. And I'll talk to you about that later, but you can have, if you have strong abilities in language understanding and language reasoning and visual spatial thinking and nonverbal reasoning and just being able to apply logic, if you have really strong abilities in those areas but weaknesses in those areas, then, you know, combining all those scores to come up with a full-scale IQ wouldn't really be fair because that full-scale IQ wouldn't accurately represent a person's overall intelligence. So there are uh, alternative IQs that you can come up with and they're increasingly they're, they're being used in you know, the field of psychological testing. So are any of you familiar with that? The, it's called General Ability Index and often if the discrepancy between the scores is enough then you can eliminate those scores to come up with an IQ. Okay, so I'm going to begin by talking about working memory and working memory is being able to hold information in mind and manipulate it. Now that's different from just short-term uh, rote memory. Short-term rote memory is just being able to repeat back what you've heard or hold it just long enough to follow through. For example, if you, someone gives you their phone number, a phone number to dial, you just repeat that and you walk over to the phone and dial the number and then it's gone. 